Welcome back, adventurers. I'm Dave, DM for the Mage Madness campaign here on the Drinks and Debauchery podcast. Today, I'm joined by a, a bottle of beer and Corey. Hi, I'm currently disappointing me only on apple and elderflower water, but I will be on some beer later. Nice. Also with Laura. I am currently drinking a lovely 12-year-old malt, I think. Scotch whiskey, yes, yeah, single malt Scotch whiskey, and I play Zari. And Mike. Hi, I'm on tea. So <laughs> tea is life, and life is tea. Perfect. So again, just another, another, another reference to the shockingly bad audio for last week. Fingers crossed, we are uh, settled and sorted with that now, and this is coming to you in much better quality. I, I pray. You pray? I, not generally, but at the moment. Why? You got any good gods? To tear. <laughs> to tear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, roll for religion, dear. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, it's an 18, yeah. I, um, I, I think I'm closer to being a warlock than a like paladin fair, or anything. Pa- I'm pretty sure your patron is some sort of gin fiend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something lurking, lurking in the abyssal tonic lakes. Yeah. He comes yep. up and floats at you like a giant piece of lime. <laughs> anyway. And on that note. <laughs> perfect. So, last week, you guys had been doing some, some more investigating. Uh, trying to find out about the missing pilots and the dead guard. You started off with being a bit of immediate murder of someone pretending to be one of the pilots in his own house, who he had obviously that turned was over. purely self-defense, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yes, defensively crushed him to death. <laughs> Wonderful. Indeed. After reporting in and sending back uh, going back out into the big wide, you've actually taken a little detour to go down to the pit club, where you've had a little natter with Crack the Goblin, and with a bit of uh, magic and tomfoolery, you've asked him to find you a changeling, where he's promptly, and in a bit of a zombie stupor, hopped down off of his stool, and marched off into the streets, and found you a... Rather common-looking gentleman being kicked the fuck out of by two elves. What Uh, race does he currently look like? Human. Human. Mike, if you'd like to properly introduce your character. We can do this in full a bit later, if if you want, or (laughs) not. But what do these guys see? These guys see a, I would say, five or six, five or seven male quite young, quite scruffy, and he's just trying to, he, he was just trying to blend in, you know, average guy, just hanging around, but so right now, he's describing, getting his... What you're describing to me right now is Dave at the age of 19. <laughs> Potentially, but we showed to her, kind of more like a bowl cut, so basically nice. somebody slapped a colander on his head and just shaved it around the sides, and he's just got these horrible curls just working out of the way. A bit of wavy at the side. Nice. Think of a think of a monk, as it were, without the bald spot. <laughs> cool. So you're currently in the uh, not quite a fetal position, but you're working on it. Um, whilst yes. you've taken a couple of kicks from some rather large, buff-looking elves. Buff elves. Buff elves. I know it's a strange one. How strange! Everyone always sees them as. Long, skinny, and lanky, but yes, they have both Wow, I, I, I remember <laughs> us ending on the two of us sort of running in to help. Yes, am I right? You have. Just to kick things off with a quick roll, can Zari and Arthur both roll me just a flat dex? Flat dex. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a group roll. Well, that's a f- four. Okay. And Zari? It is 18. 
Okay. Yep. That's not quite going to hit the, the marker I had set to dictate whether or not you were going, this was going to act as a surprise round or not. Because you have been charging up the street. So they have seen you. So I'd like you both, well, all three, please, to roll initiative. Lovely. I'm good at that. 22. Good. 16, my good man. 16. And Zari. That is a 18. 18. Okay. Cool. Can I just ask a quick bit of notes, just to speed things along from my perspective? Mike, what is your current mm. AC? Uh, the class is 13. 13. And your current HP? Is, I think, 22. No, 15. 15. 15. Um, Corey, same question, please. 14 AC, 13 health point. And Laura, what is Zari rocking? Zari has an armor class of 12 and 14 of her health points remaining. Oh dear. Okay, so fingers crossed I can do this quite fast. I'm trying... TPK, TPK. TPK. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... Look, just because I almost killed you on your first session doesn't mean we have to return the favour, right? Cool. Arthur, it's your move. My move. Okay. So, axes in hand. How far away am I? Uh, you're about 15 feet away. Oh, fine. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go straight up towards the one nearest and swing. Okay. Um, special. Cool. Roll to hit. Yeah. That is a 16. 16 hits. Rough damage. Ooh. Six points of damage. Good hit. And then on my... That was my bonus action. I'm going to make a second swing. Okay. That's your uh, two weapon fighting. Two weapon it? fighting. Yeah. yeah. 16 again. Cool. Um, Still hit. But the way... I realised that we did it slight. I did it slightly wrong last time. The way that two weapon fighting works is you just roll the dice, don't add the modifier. Yes. Your second one, yeah. Yeah. It's like me trying to hit something with my left hand. I mean, I'll hit it, just not as hard as with my right. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's still a six because I just rolled max damage. You. Good twelve points uh, total, which he did not like. Zari, your move. Uh, so I would like to get within uh, probably about 10 feet of these bad boys, if I can. Sure, sure. And once I get into that sort of 10, 15 foot range, I would thorn whip. Okay, which one are you aiming for? Well, Arthur is taking care of one of them, so I will take the other. Okay. Perfect. Uh, roll to hit. That is 16. 16 continues to hit. So, that means it's one of these. They take 6 points of piercing damage. Okay. And I would assume as elves that they are large or smaller. Uh, they are indeed. they uh, so I pull them 10 feet closer to me. Okay, so you've pulled him, you've just scorpioned, get over here, just dragged him towards you. Yes. Cool. Very Probably good. Probably leaving about a 5 foot between us. It's a 15 foot range, isn't it? Oh, well, Thorn Whip is a 30 foot range. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, you could have done it whilst you were moving towards him pulled him 10 foot and then closed the gap to still leave a 5 foot gap between you 
That was kind of what I was seeing. Cool. Trying to get him away from a interesting, soon-to-be-made acquaintance. Cool. And on that topic, Mystery Man. Mystery Man Mike, can you make a move? Because I like a little... Yeah, right. so... I'm, I'm pretty much certain that I'm within engagement range of these guys because, you know, they've got the feet in the head. Uh, um, one of them... One of them you currently do now. One's been pulled about ten foot away from you. Mm-hmm. So you can... What's nearby? Up. What's near me? What's near me? Well, for a start, one of the thugs... Yeah. You're... You were. Uh, I can dice roll this if you if you wish. I can dice roll me having a look around to see what there is. Uh, no, no. We again, like you didn't just appear in the world being kicked the fuck out of. Not the way it sounds. <laughs> you had just been inside a shop with another gentleman, and these two took exception to something you said. So you have still got the shop in front of you. There may be a water butt about twenty feet off to your right uh-huh. but right now you are prone so you'd have to spend half your movement to stand yeah, no. up yeah sure um so with this guy that's wearing on me i am going to spend my movement to get up cool so you that's half of it isn't it so you've got mm-hmm. i think another 15 another what sorry 15 feet of movement uh, okay so you're so nothing to else. speed yeah there's nothing else nearby. Okay. No, not that you can get to okay. immediately. Okay. I want to whip out my rapier. Okay. And try and give him a nice little touch. Little slight jab. Little slight jab to put him off balance. Little slight jab to knock him off his balance in his right leg. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm intrigued by this. So... I may increase his armor class a little bit because you're directing an attack to a specific place. You're not just making an attack. But sure. then, depending on how that goes, will you know you may get some extra damage, or if you wanted it to, like I said, you're not. Yeah, if you're trying to stumble him, then maybe that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, roll, roll to hit, roll to poke. <laughs> oh, seven plus five. That just just hits his adjusted armor class. So you've managed to poke him oh. in the leg. If you'd roll for oh, that. Hey. <laughs> oh, I got it now. <laughs> uh, 1d8 plus 3. Get in! Here we go! Drive that mother, that mother in. Right, uh, 5 plus 3. That's 8 damage. Boom. Stabbing him quite succinctly in the thigh. Um... Guy's taken quite a lot of damage quite quickly. He's 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 not very pleased. Are you going to use any bonus action or any of your movement? I am going to stand above him, bring the sword and pull my hilt up to him so I've still got it in his leg and go beg for mercy. Okay. <laughs> um fuck it, gimme Give me an intimidation roll. You just uh, kebab this guy's thigh. He's can I assist? Yeah, yeah, cool. Because I'm right next to him with my axes out. Ooh. So yeah, um, Mike, Hello. Roll, roll with advantage. That's a big chopper. Another <clears throat> five. <laughs> and a one. Ooh. Brilliant. <laughs> I'll eat you, you <laughs> bitch. He just growls oh. at you. There you are. <laughs> and with that, it's his go. And he's going to roll. So a 17 hits. And so he does a total of um, five points of damage with uh-huh. his with a little blunt mace cudgel thing that he's got at his side. You just skewered him in the leg, so he's just whammed you around the side of the dome in response. Oh, you... oh God, man! Oh, I felt that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and this is going to be risky. He's going to attempt to do the same again. For which 
you you're still recoiling from the first hit, but that's actually put him slightly off balance. So his second swing just absolutely whooshes over your head and ends his go. Gonna get in a fly common. What do you want to say? Why don't you try hitting me with your handbag next time? You, you shut up. He doesn't have great repartee. Um, <laughs> so second thug uh, had been yanked ten foot towards you, Laura. I think you've pulled him out of the way of Corey, haven't you? He's going to just run at you then for the rest of his movement and take a couple of swings at you again with another little cudgelly thing. One, you deftly sidestep. And the second... God, these guys are shit. <laughs> um, does absolutely nothing. He kind of just looks at you. <laughs> uh, could, could you stand still, please? And so we're at the... Yeah, we're at the top of the round with Arthur. Well, Arthur is going to uh, swing... Attempt to swing both of his axes. Kind of like a uh, symbol. You know, when you... When you Clash two symbols together. I want to do that on his head with my axes. Okay. Roll to hit. Ro- roll to hit. So do I roll both of my rolls to hit? Yeah, let's let's do it like that. We're still two independent. Okay, so we've got a 17 and a 14. Okay, cool. Yep, both connect. Um, nice. Uh, Roll your two weapon damage, add your modifier, plus one. Plus one. Plus one. That's a good start. That's not so good of a finish. So six, one, three, so ten. Okay. You cleave this guy's face, effectively. He's absolutely lost an ear. You've heard a crunch as his jaws, uh, part of his skull, is just cracked. Lovely. Make me an insight check. Make me an insight Yeah. Like, uh, he's not dead. No. Uh, okay, that's a 17. Okay. Um, it's kind of hard to tell through the blood and the miscellaneous skull. But, yeah, yeah he's pretty fucking terrified of you right now. What the fuck? Okay. Yeah, they've gone from giving a guy a kicking to... Him being hit twice with axe, uh, axes, stabbed in the thigh, and then had his face crushed. Yeah. He's... I was just going to say, Arthur at this point, seeing he's still alive, would have gone, well, you're, you're quite difficult to kill, aren't you? Don't kill me. <laughs> you want me to kill you? Don't kill me. Don't kill you. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, why were you kicking my friend here? Mm-hmm. And I whisper to... Well, I sort of give... Um, the changeling, well, the human guy, a uh, sort of a look of go with it. Why were you? Why were you hurting my dear friend? And... I'm your friend. Ha! Ha! Good news. Yeah. Why were you hurting me? Tell him. That's all the time he's got for the moment. But so we're with Zari, and just just for. Uh, like a quantifier there. Very difficult to speak when you don't have much of a jawbone. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Zari. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, please don't hurt me. Well, okay. And I will blow him a kiss and cast poison spray. Oh, it's very kind of you. Oh my god, my face! (laughs) Uh, So that's a a saving throw from me, isn't it? Or isn't it? Yeah, okay. These guys are so shit. Uh, What's the saving? What did you roll? I rolled a six. Okay, that that doesn't beat the the ten you needed. (laughs) Yeah, and there are no modifiers this guy possesses that is going to make his life better. Cool. Do your thing. Do the damage. Okay, so that will be nine points Jesus. of poisoning damage. Yeah, so when you blow this this mist of uh, kiss into his eyes, 
it's just a faint trickle of blood from from his eyes and nose as the the soft tissue around the edges of this begins to melt and burn. Um, I'm impressed at their their durability, the amount of health they have on a meta gaming process. Yeah, they they weren't some bitches. They are now. <laughs> they are now. <laughs> Zari, you going to do anything else? Um. I am going to smile and uh, just ready my quarter star. Okay, cool. That is first guy who confronted with Master the pair of, yeah confronted with the pair of you two is going to take the dodge action, the disengage action. Sorry, and just book it into his shop. Well, into the shop he's right beside. Um, that puts him out there. Okay. Second guy. Let's give him a quick intelligence roll. Yeah, okay. He knows he's in some trouble now. He is going to just drop his cudgel and just kind of drop to his knees, putting his hands in the air. Look, look, there's no, no reason. Don't have to... This doesn't have to go the full way. All right? Answer the questions, please. Uh, sure. Why were you hurting my friend here? What did he do? Well, he came in like. Sorry, just it wouldn't have taken long for this, but the door opens again, and instead of the other elf thug that you've you've seen, you're actually confronted. First, with a hobgoblin. Oh. With the elf behind him, kind of pointing at you guys. Right. What's going on here? Well, your uh, minions, I suppose, were hurting my friend here. What what is the meaning of this? They have dealt with the security of my property by getting rid of undesirables. This one came in mumbled something about an amulet. I said I didn't want it. Was trying to convince us that it was important. I said I didn't want it. This is when my two security officers took him outside, and now one of them needs a new face. Is there any... Is that any reason to beat a man for trying to convince you to buy something? Is this the kind of... You do know where you are. Right. Of course. Why do you think a shopkeep has to have two bloody security guards? Going to need well, a new security guard. This one's broken. May I have my other man? Take him. Just going to reach out, grab his cudgel, and run away. <laughs> um, well, and he points up towards the, the sign on top of the front of his shop. This is... Gerbor's hardware. Oh, God damn it. Right across the front of one of his signs, there seems to have been something painted and scribbled on. Mike, you can probably read this, but can you just give me a little a low perception check to see if you recognize it? Mm-hmm. Or investigation, in fact. Investigation, please. If you're investigating what he's pointing at. That is a 22. Cool. So, with him saying all this, he's walking up towards a sign that has, has his shop name written on it. And every day I have to come and wash this bloody graffiti off. And just before he's able to really rid of any of it the, with a cloth from his belt you've been able to recognize this as a, a language your mother taught you mm-hmm. out of character this is thieves cant mm-hmm. but very quickly you're able to read we have moved now at the old mill watch out for traps the family in this one almost kind of uh, rune-like scrawl of paint 
you've seen the small script etched into the paint itself that conveys that in the secret tongue of the thieves. Okay. And with that, he finishes wiping it off. And... Well, well, I want to um, make up to take an action here. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to throw it at him that if he's so knowledgeable of the area and he's got his, you know, he's got his wits about him, show me which way is the mill. Yeah. The mill. Would Arthur know anyway? Um, possibly not, actually. Um, give me... Would you like this intimidation? Persuasion? Um, I'm just... Give me one sec. So I can just think. Um, I think that... Arthur, you're unlikely to know small buildings in the out, you know, in the outskirts. Yeah. Where, yeah, um, let's see, what's his temperament now that you're not actually killing his people? He's pretty salty towards you, so yeah, give me um, a persuasion check. 18. Well, I do. You're not trying to sell us your amulet and... That appears to have been a bit of a confusion, so I'm sorry. I'll help you where I can. The old mill, this was about five miles out of town. If you're on the south road, uh, it'll be off to your left. Uh, just old windmill. Uh, not used in the past no, 20, 30 years or something. Okay. I'll turn to... Arthur, and go, which way south? Wh which way south? Uh, yeah. I, I'll, I'll show you. When we, when we get back to the surface, I'll lead you. It's difficult to explain which way is south. Oh, okay. What do you sell, sir? Well, magical artifacts and such. You get a lot of Interest, but I also get a lot of <sighs> interest. I've got a limited stock, but it changes quite rapidly. Any rings of protection? I don't remember seeing one in this um, group, but if you wanted to have a little look at some of my, my wares... Maybe another time. For a retainer, I could find one and hold it. How much? Um, ring of protection. Bear with me. Come in, come in, come in. Sure. Are you following Zari? Oh, yes. And I would like to delicately approach the, uh, the thug that I uh, blew a kiss to, please. And... Of being very cautious about you. Both hands up in sort of that hands up defensive position. I am sorry. May I tend to your wounds? I mean you no harm. My eyes really hurt. Like lots. Can you make let, it stop? Let me see if I can help you there. And using my herbalism kit, can I do some form of medicine check? Please do, yep. Uh, just as you're doing that, Corey, he says, well, normally these are, oh, about three and a half thousand gold pieces. Three and a half thousand for a ring of protection? Yes. Uh, right. Got to make a living, but I would be, you know, you didn't actually kill my guards. Your friend appears to be trying to fix one of them, at least. Oh, and to note for my character's vocation, I'm going to be inside the shop, and I want to have a right good nosy and have a look around, but that can come later. Okay, cool. So I'm inside the shop positions. So... I would say 2,000 gold pieces for the, the ring. It's a heavy discount. And a 
75 gold retainer. Do I have enough to put a retainer down now? You have enough for the uh, retainer. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. Enough, no. enough left over <laughs> for, to, like, survive? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you... Well, you at least have a few hundred on you. Yeah. But that's not what you have access to. Yeah, fine. Cool. I'm happy with that. I, I, I So, um, on that note, yes, um... I'm I'm definitely interested. Okay. How how about Ah, forget it. Seventy five. Seventy five. Um good. Um and he scrolls you a bit of a receipt which he's pinching between two fingers with his other hand out. No, no thank you. Uh, any any ETA? On when I would, when you would get one in, uh, they they come in relatively frequently, but it's it's a little random. Depends if someone's making them, selling them. If any adventurers come in selling things of their their findings, but well, well I'll uh, I'll come by whenever I'm in the pits and see if you have one. Okay. Good deal. I shake his hand and then start walking. Do, um, do, do you pay to... him the money? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought I'd already hand over. Oh, but sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, just scratch down 75G for a bit um, and a receipt for one ring of protection. Um, now, um... Mike's character. You're mm. having a proper look around? Oh, my eyes are everywhere, I know. I mean, if, if this guy's now trying to give us a discount, I'm definitely having a proper little movie. Um, like on every single shelf, my head's going shelf, shelf, shelf. Shelf, shelf, shelf. You see a lot of... Well, you see a handful of potions... A couple of rings, a fair amount of scrolls of varying different paper qualities, and a little colour coordinated ribbon around the centre of them, holding them closed. There's a little crossbow. Mm -hmm. There okay. are very fine looking weapons. Oh. But. I'm interested in the weapons and the paper. Okay. Well, the papers are different spells. Just spell scrolls, but the colour of the ribbon indicates the strength of it and also then how expensive it's going to be. So, oh, okay. for example, one of the green ones here is a scroll of spider climb. Now, that's pretty cheap at 96 gold, and it would allow you to climb up a vertical surface and climb to the ceiling. Whereas one of the purple ones here is the scroll of etherealness. This will allow you to walk through the wall itself. But that's 1,490. Wow. That's amazing. For the first one. How high can I go? Well, no, it's... Uh, you would be able to climb for one hour or simply walk up a wall or upside down along the ceiling without having your hands, you know, needing to grip onto the wall. Amazing. You would be as a spider of the wall. Some kind of man spider. <laughs> I wonder what does that you mean. Can go and, does, that, does that mean I can go anywhere a, a spider will be able to go? <laughs> <laughs> or do whatever a spider might be able to do? No, oh, it's, it's just the walking thing, I'm afraid. Oh. oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh. I have a couple of um, health potions here. Um, this one, you know, just the, a basic potion of healing, but nice and cheap at 14 gold. Uh, Arthur whispers under his breath, I can do better. Uh, a potion of greater healing. I, 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 
for four and I three. Was back. And I whistle back. Yeah, he's taking us for a right mug. <laughs> so I'm going to try and get me one of those potions but without paying for it. Oh. Okay. Um, so there are a total of five potions. A greater, uh, a normal potion of healing, a potion of greater healing, one that seems to be glowing faintly, mm -hmm. and two very ornate looking bottles, both with the purple little price tags. So, okay. what are you doing to attempt to do this? Like, you're not just looking at him whilst he's showing you his wares and just taking it off the wall, are you? Oh, no. I'm playing the game of juggle with the bottle. So now that you've let me know there's five, I'm going to be like, how much is this one? What's it up in front of me? How much is this one? Yeah. And I'm, you know, yeah, I'm not aiming I'm not big. I'm not aiming big for this. Okay, so the the potion of protection against radiance that's 87 gold the 130 gold for the superior healing and um, uh, 391 for the supreme mm -hmm. these are very good prices um, so uh, what kind of price range are you you going well well to be, to, to be honest I'm kind of fresh out um Kind of fresh out of gold right now, but oh. what if I was to say to say take the most expensive one, plop it on the table, and then at that point, and at that point, with it plopping it on the table, I take the lesser healing potion and slide it. Okay, so you're back. you're you're trying to do uh, like 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 so, a magician's trick of. Yeah, you're showing him yeah. one hand whilst your other hand's moving. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes. Before we continue, can I remind you that I am doing a medicine yes, check, sorry. which might be slightly distracting if I'm making someone wince and cry in pain, and this might distract the shop owner. Very maybe. good. Okay. Oh. okay. Um, I like a style. So yeah, roll uh, roll your medicine check. I, I wrote that a little while ago, um, so that was a, 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 a 23. Yeah, okay. He's high as a motherfucker. You've... <laughs> <laughs> um, your, your knowledge of poisons and because, kind of because tinctures... Because my poison spray is my own, I would imagine that... Yeah. As I grew up, I'd figure out how to, you know... Uh, nullify, yes. Yeah, nullify is the word I was thinking of uh, from accidents that perhaps happened in the so. so, yep. I'll also go so far as to say you've managed to get him to tear off one of his the sleeves of his arms. As you've applied an ointment, you've also bandaged his eyes. So, okay, but I haven't pulled off his arms, have I? No. No. <laughs> cool. So, if if you're both liking that, then just yeah, give me a sleight of hand check, please, Mike, and I will take a. Um, I'm going to get this guy to roll uh, for what's it called. Perception. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. But at disadvantage because he's being distracted. Okay. So, yeah. Um, cool. What What was your sleight of hand roll? 15. Cool. Just as he's beginning to turn, turn around, there's a bit of a squeal as Zari tightens the headband onto this guy's... Uh, around this guy's eyes. Um, the other guy is practically unconscious and trying to find his teeth. Um, <laughs> so yeah, he doesn't see you, and for that level of difference, I'll say that you were able to pocket 
a potion of greater healing. Ooh. DM, you treat me well. I do. Well, would I have any idea that would, well, sorry, would Arthur have any idea if this guy was affiliated with any of the three major syndicates? You wouldn't innately. Can I make an investigation round the room? Um, yeah, please. Sorry, needed to get a new beer. The other one's dead. That's I think a we were Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, you don't see any insignia or anything that would indicate affiliation. Laura, okay. you were going to say something? Oh, um, Zari has noticed all of these types of papers. Yes. And I would like to start... At... Can I do some sort of in investigation role um, to compare, basically, the stock of paper that is a spell scroll with another piece of paper that I have previously been in contact with to see if there is any correlation. Um, Does that make sense? I'm, I'm, I think the, the, the piece of paper that you got out of... Yeah. Yeah. The one that, yeah, the one out of the guy's pocket. Yeah, okay. So. I'll, I'll just state that one seems to have been kind of torn out of rather a normal notepad even if you're not entirely certain what a notepad would be you're familiar well actually no fuck it you you guys would still have paper in the glade is. yeah it's hard sometimes to know what what the glade has and doesn't have um whereas the scrolls are as i said much different uh, uh sorry different values and kind of quality of that's that's what I was kind of yeah. trying to get to was the the piece of paper so I'm imagining that spell scrolls are of a wax and stock and uh, thickness and grading the similar thing that you would for fancy stationery and invites and stuff yeah. like that and I was trying to assess whether the piece of paper that we had found was of a similar qual quality or of a much more basic quality. Very basic that quality. That was what Whereas... Zari was trying to figure out. Yeah. Whereas without, the... Because she's suddenly seen this paper and, and gone, oh yes, paper. Where the the little small scrolls that have uh, the little black tag on them are almost a bit kind of a tatty paper. That's the closest, but it's still very different. Whereas the... Okay. The, the ones, for example, with the purple binding are big and opulent and thick and feel really, well, magic. <laughs> but all of them are of a quality that I would associate with fanciness and not of the note paper that yeah, we have. exactly. Cool, that's fine. I also have some good news for you guys. Ooh. Um... We're going to treat this... You've been in the shop now for 20 minutes or so. So you've okay. had... You can have a little bit of a short rest. Get some healing. And the big one... I'd like you all to level up your characters to Ooh. level 3. Right. I like that. These guys were... Again, you could have just carried on fighting. And you would have gotten a decent whack of XP. Um, I'm also for the listeners at home um, I'm kind of mixing between milestones and um, combat XP because if you reward people purely in combat XP one, you get the people farming rats as <laughs> Laura's recently mentioned and it turns your party into murder hobos so I want to reward the storytelling aspect um, and you know, problem solving aspect as well so hooray level three i don't know how you guys want to do this do you want to be open and declarative of what you're selecting um okay shall i go first 
please do. Uh, so, obviously, we'd already discussed that I was going to choose this anyway, but I've chosen the specialist alchemist. Um, the artificer specialist alchemist. Um, and I've got... I think, yeah, I'm going for leather workers' tools as my new tool proficiency because I've got something to discuss with you. I don't know whether we're now or outside of the Let's hold it, but yeah, it's good to know that you've got a, got a plan for it. Cool. Cool. Who wants to go next? Zari, Hello. I see you've turned level three as well. Yeah. Would you like to explain your your choices? Oh, well, you know, I'm just a druid, and I have chosen my druid circle at level three. Uh, So I've always been circle of the land, rather than any of the other circles. But I am specifically circle of the desert, uh, which just uh, gives me access to a few uh, fun, innate spellcasting talents. Because, you know, who wouldn't want that? Um, so, yeah. And I can uh, wild shape into things that are a bit cooler as well. Nice. And uh, we will eventually actually mention your character's name, Mike. But for the time being, what has your character undergone? I have undergone Swashbuckler. Mm-hmm. So now I've got some fancy footwork and rakish audacity. Very nice. Gonna be. Oh no, sorry, I can't do the the slightly cooler animals yet. I'm still on uh, challenge ratings zero to one eighth and one quarter. And just to let you know, whilst we're at this this stage, um, I am still working with each of them to have to homebrew a little extra thing for each of them. Um, and so far, we've got two of these kind of loosely planned, and I, we're just going to try and work out something for Mike, but. Stay tuned. Anyway, back to the shop. Back to the shop. So, what is the name of the shop? Uh, Gerber's Hardware. I haven't been here very long, but set up shop and uh, business is quite good. You haven't need to sell anything. I've got a bit of gold. I can buy some things off you. I have carried to, to figure about whipping out the post. <laughs> you, you're you're attempting to uh, put a bucket on his head, Skyrim style. Nick all his stuff, remove the bucket, and sell him back his own belongings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe that'll be your fucking your level up reward. Yeah, level seventeen bucket. <laughs> the bucket of beguiling. Um, oh. Wonderful. Okay, so rough plan. What do you guys want to do? What right now? Right now. Okay, so uh, if the other two are done in the shop, um, the next point of call, I believe. Um, actually, <laughs> what was the next point? We needed to find a changeling. What did we need to find the changeling? For? <laughs> Anyone? Um, we needed the changeling because we accidentally hugged a changeling to death. Yes. And to be able to perhaps uh, know a little bit more about Siren's fury and know yeah. um, uh, more about the, all of that, we needed uh, someone that would know, yes? So we need to question Mike. We need to get him on her side we we might need him for a little bit longer yes right um well if if you two are done 
are we are we ready to go? Um, I will catch up with you in just a moment. Yes. No problem. Friend, come on. Let's go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are we going? I just need to have a conversation. Well, go have a drink. Come with me. I'll show you around. Oh, okay. do not forget, Arthur. You owe me a whole night's drinking. I do, and we will do that. Well now, remembered. come, friend. Uh, whilst I'm going for this walk, I've got a hand near my dagger as we, as we walk out of the shop. Would Arthur have noticed that? Um, What's your passive I... insight? Uh, uh, passive perception. It is... It's wisdom plus ten in it. Oh, nine. <laughs> yeah, he followed you. You're, you're feeling pretty confident that he's there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Let's let's go. Okay. So we're gonna quickly, as you guys walk out into into this bustling uh, street with now a little few splats of blood on the floor. Um, we're just going to see what Zari's up to first. Zari, what are you up to? I was a bit distracted in the shop doing my medicine check, so I was just having a... I'm not too interested in scrolls. They do not... They are not for me. Uh, but I am interested in seeing if there's any uh, wearable garments, perhaps, yeah. of a magical nature. Well, we've, you know, depends on what you can really afford. We don't have too many wearable things that are particularly cheap. Uh, at the moment, I've got this amulet of health, uh, a belt of dwarven kind. What else? He roots around and uh, a ring of free action, but um, these are all very expensive. Yes, that is the problem. I am not even wearing shoes. And I have noticed that everyone around here seems to be wearing shoes. I wondered if you had anything like that. Or perhaps you know somewhere I might buy some? Oh, I can... I mean, I don't just have... You know, I, I mean, Zari looks incredibly embarrassed about this yeah. whole line of questioning, but she's started to feel a little bit uncomfortable, sort of padding next to Arthur, who's in boots and everything, and sort of stood there barefoot all the time. I mean, your feet do look kind of sore. Don't, don't the scales hurt? Oh no, I am, I am used to them. Yes, but. I think other people get upset by seeing them. And yeah. when other people are upset, they tend to upset me. Well, you're talking to someone with red skin and tusks, I kind of agree. Yes. Um, him. I'll, I'll have a look in the back. Like, it's not just magic stuff we've got. And you see him through just walk around his desk. Desk for sale, by the way. It's a gold piece. And starts pulling out a sack and a little bag that makes a tinkly noise. A couple of other gems that look a bit dull. A, a backpack. Uh, well, I've got... Oh, these, some thieves' tools. Get them out of the way. Um, and I've got two things that might work. One, I can sell you these boots. They're pretty big. But I'd only take a copper or something. Um, or, you know, I've got some of this nice linen. I, I'd only charge you like a silver. But you could turn it into like, a foot wrap. And that'll get you, like, back in the main the main town, there's, there's a bit of a fancier place. If you wanted fancy shoes. But if you're just after a cobbler's, uh, I think there's one couple of streets down the road. Oh, um... What colour is the fabric? Because of course that matters. Um, give me one sec. Sorry, boys. It's going to be a light blue, I'm afraid. This is this is fine. I like blue. It is like the sky that I cannot see from down here. I will I will buy the linen, please. 
All right, miss. Um, just, yeah. Uh, just a silver piece, then. Thank you. And I happily hand over the silver. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Right, um, if you... I can keep an eye out for something. Oh, only if you think they'd be suitable for me. I do not want you to be distracted from what you need to find for my friend. <laughs> yes? Well, the same sort of thing, really. Uh, every so often we get things like, uh, what are they, boots of elven kind and things like that come in. They're not too rare. I think I will chance it to see what comes in next time I come. But Very thank good. you. You okay. will be back. I'm sure. Why well, don't you go and uh, please don't kill my guards? Oh no, I am. I am sorry. I. I did not realize that perhaps my friend's friend had upset you so. To be honest, I didn't understand it. Muttering something about looking for people and waving an amulet. And he got very upset when I said I didn't know nothing and didn't want it. And, well, Dwayne over there kind of lost his temper. Oh, Wayne, is that the one without the face now? Yeah. Here, let me see if I can can help you with that. And I'll stay a bit longer to do some uh, medicine check or whatever on Dwayne's face. Cool. There's, yep, there were Dwayne and Sarah. I know technically Sarah's a female name, but damn it, this, this, this elf was called Sarah. And these are oh, both. Sorry, you can be a henchman and a woman and an elf <coughs> all at the same time. Yeah, uh, it's just yeah. I had already oh, described them as male. That was where I tied myself in. The reason for this is these are our two fans. Well, the two fans hey. that we have that aren't a part of this show. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, quick shout out to you guys. Thank you. Yay. Um, but I'm sure me lingering back here will give uh, Arthur a chance to um, discuss things, yes? Cool, and we are with that going to flit over to Arthur and Mystery Mike's man. Cool. So I'm going to be leading him straight to the pits, um, just because it's a place that Arthur is is comfortable with, knows very well, and... I don't know this guy very well, so... Okay. Well, well, friend, would you like to... Would you like to explain a little bit further your side of the story? What happened? What do you mean, what happened? Well, why why were you being beaten? Is it as they said? You were just showing them an amulet and... Wait a second. Let, where are my mallets? Arthur Van. And he really... He, he, uh, oh! Ha- put his, ha- puts his hand out for it to ha- shake your hand. What's your name? Well, my, 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 my name is, um, my name is, is Meeks, Meeks, Meeks. Meeks? Yeah. Well, what a, an interesting name. Where are you from? I, um, from around here. Okay. I've yeah. lived here my entire yeah. life. Any, anywhere, anywhere particular? Yeah, um. So it's um it's 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 old brick lane. Um it's 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 you know, it's it's opposite to that to that type road. Can I um, make an insight check, please? Sure. Um no, just talking. just one quick thing. Um yeah. if Mike you can't remember the name of the place you're actually from, I can drop that in the chat to you. Or if you are trying to be um, deceitful, I'll get you to roll deceit. I am trying to be deceitful. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, uh, yep. One insight, insight. and one um, deception, please. Insight was a seventeen. Deception uh, was a twelve. Okay. Cool. So I'd understand that he was yeah lying. Yeah. But oh, okay. I'm I'm aware of these places. 
Well, now that we're acquainted, would you like to? What are you doing down here? Dark. Um, I, I, I'm looking for work. What? Um, yes, yes. One of the one of the finest mercenaries and cat burglars you ever did see. My rates uh, are fair. Would you be interested? It's rather interesting you should say that. We are after a changeling, and I have a feeling that you may be one. Oh, okay. Am I correct in my assumptions? Can I go for a deception on this? Uh, yeah. Oh my god. I got one. Fifteen that time. Plus six. I plus mean, six. It, there was a very <laughs> low chance, given that there has been a magic spell cast to... To kind of guide them towards a changeling, and then yeah. they see you. Uh, I also apologise because this is rather sloppy writing on my behalf. Um, but hey, secrets within campaign. Who cares? Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, you, you're trying to shrug it off, and you end up nodding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I reckon I fit that bill. Interesting. Um, yeah, but, you know, um, payment up front, buddy. Payment up front before we go any further. What do you require? Uh, you got any food? Food? I have plenty yeah. of food. <laughs> oh, no, you're talking about language. Get it, what have you got? What have I got? Uh, we have lots of fish at my house. We're done. Fine. And that's... That's what you want. Yeah. I haven't eaten for like three days. So, oh dear. You know, those, those, yeah, those, those, those guys. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest. You know, I'm a weapon for hire. Now, if, if I was at full strength, right, they wouldn't have had nothing on me. <laughs> nothing. Nothing on me. Well, I'm, I'm convinced. Now, I may want, you may want to hear what I have to offer you first, what I'm requiring. On you, sorry. Okay. Now, are you familiar with the? And I look. Arthur looks around, um, making sure that sort of nobody's there, mm-hmm. there and, and he can't be heard. Um, yeah. I'm sure you're aware. A particular group of people summons fury. Roll me a history check, there, Mike. There's a faint yeah. chance that you may. Know of this? Yeah, the faint chance. <clears throat> Four plus two, <laughs> six. You recall you've heard the name, but not contextually. <laughs> you weren't here Thanks. to find these these people. You only know the people as family. As a law, ask: Do sirens exist? <laughs> On the, uh, on the rock. Uh, as in, like, the monster? Hmm. Yes. Yeah, I know them. I, I think I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, those, um, there's those things at the... at the... at the... Uh, near the... near the ports, right? Not... You know? Not quite. Those are... those are sirens. Now, these people, a group of people like you and me, who... I think I... Uh, have they, got, have, have they got wonderful breath, like sirens, or...? I mean, some of them may. Anyway, just let, oh. let me explain. Mm-hmm. Some of them may, but most of them probably don't. Um, okay. They are a group of people that do unsavory things for me. Not, not thievery, generally. It's generally killing. Yeah, that's my kind of unsavory. I'm all in. Right. Well, I need you, we need you, to get some answers. From... Do you think that's something you can do? From? From the Siren's Fury. (laughs) Uh, uh, I mean... How much fish have you got? As much as you'd these, like. These, 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 these guys turn out big time. 
Um, I, 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 I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not in the mood for killing people like, like these guys. You know? I'm not asking you to kill them. I'm asking. Uh, oh, to, okay. I'm asking you to be friendly to them. Get them okay. comfortable and ask a few difficult questions. All right. Um, all the fish you want. Um, pro- are you talking about your sardines? They are, they are wonderful. I've caught up to you by this point. Yeah, I've yeah. decided this. Well, sorry, the, <laughs> I have more than just sardines, but yes, sardines are. Oh well, if he is offering you sardines, I would take him off on this. They are quite delicious. Yes. Why? Thank you, sorry. My son likes them too. So I'm going to say that you guys have made it back to the bar it wasn't very far <laughs> crack now out of his kind of entranced entranced state is back behind the bar how do i want to do this little bit there is something there arthur can you make me a perception roll please oh so close so that is a flaccid 20 Okay. I do love how you call it a flaccid twenty. It's just <laughs> hilarious to me. A flaccid what twenty, dirty twenty. A, a yeah. dirty twenty, unnatural twenty. Just you know. It's just a limp twenty. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a whole range of these depending on what you modify. Oh, this is a damp. This is just a that's... damp <laughs> 20. That, that'd this be if a... you've got a 17 with a plus 3. Uh, what if it's a moist 20? <laughs> oh, I, I think oh, we're yeah. losing... There's a lot of followers. There's a lot of followers. Losing followers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. For all you moist fans, hit subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Oh. So, looking, at, looking around as you've, you've entered... Your the first thing that catches your eye is a familiar big pink hat with a feather. Okay. Now, b- directly behind this is a form that you've seen briefly. This is such a fucking stretch for a joke, but I don't care. If you remember when we had talked about your downtime and your your fights, the, w- the few fights that you had gotten involved with. Yes. One of your opponents, your former opponents, is back. Is back? Yeah. Ooh. The lusciously long-haired and very well-kept and dressed-up gorilla. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> oh, That's right. Rematch. I'm fighting tonight, aren't I? As well. You may have the opportunity for a rematch with Harambe. Oh. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> oh no! Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I can't wait to kill him again. In very, very pink trunks. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so off, off in the side corner there. But I'm also aware of the time, so we're going to wrap it up soon. But yeah, yeah is there anything else you guys want to do? Immediately, or are we fine to leave I it? I think I'm I'm good. Can I can I just do one thing, sort of not directly in game, um, but I just I completely forgot about my magical infusions. Yeah. Um. So I've got four at the minute. Well, I've got four that I can choose from. And I can have two of them at once. Yes. Um. And I want my returning weapon on one of my axes, and I want. Enhanced defense on my armor. Okay. Makes sense. Um, there are spell components to this, aren't they? Um, you are there. I believe, isn't this that you are casting a spell to create yeah. these? It's, it's infused item. You can touch up to two magic non-magical objects, imbuing them, each of them with one of your artificial artificer infusions, turning it into a magic item. You can attune yourself to each item um, instantly, um, or you can forgo attunement so that someone else can. Um, it remains indefinitely, in- but when you die, it vanishes after two days. There's nothing about components. 
Yeah. What, no. That... What, what you might be confusing it with is his uh, magical tinkering. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. I think he has uh, a maximum of two objects at one time. Yes. Um, usage, etc. So you've got magical tinkering, and then you'll also have artificial infusions. Yeah. Um, of which you can infuse up to two separate items as well. Yeah. So, <clears throat> sorry. Um, whenever you finish a long rest. So yep. we'll we'll see you've you've done this as your morning thing this morning. Um, yeah. So going won't forward, just damage for <laughs> yeah the retrograde. But yeah, I would say I did it this morning. Um, so then it's it's indefinite for now, and I I can take that away and do it do another one. I just can only have two at once. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it doesn't stop at the end of the day. It just happens no. until... Yeah. It, it, it's basically a sense it's of... replaced. Okay, you can be tr drunk on these two drinks, <laughs> but then you drink another one, and then the first drink doesn't count anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I was remembering the, the potion maker uh, variant, yep. and that one you do, I believe, spend a spell slot, but you can, create, create, the, you can yeah. create the potion. Yeah. Uh, so cool, yeah. We'll we'll say you've you've got your infusions all set up. Yeah. Um, have I seen any animals that I might not have previously seen, as I am now in an urban environment? Um, I would say that there are a handful of opportune. Give me a general. Um, also, give me access to your your spreadsheet <laughs> so as i can tick this off like a bingo sheet um but yeah give me a a couple of perception rolls i'd say three uh that's a d20 that's a d20 and that's a d20 okay so i have got she says getting her character sheet back open perception i have got a nine a 13 and a 21 okay um so we're going to say um i will give you this chance to for me to send you my list and we can agree next time well what yeah animals but they might have seen <laughs> well yeah i'm i'm j i'm fine to say these two well these few off the bat but if you hand me your sheet i can actually attune this like properly you can get collect more mm -hmm. like a, you are absolutely pokemon hunting here um <laughs> so far you've collected a cat a dog a mouse a frog and now a strange one a gorilla yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. a very oh. flamboyant gorilla Oh, please tell me that when if she was to wild shape into the gorilla that she'd seen, it's exactly like the gorilla she saw. Absolutely. Oh, amazing. This is Animorph rules. <laughs> so you, <laughs> you, you, you would wild shape into Harambe. Correct. This might have to be done, my friends. <laughs> so, okay. there we go. We've introduced a new character. Um, me set up an old rival. Um, we had the gnome disappear, uh, sorry, the, the goblin disappear throughout the whole fucking thing, um, yeah. which is a shame, <coughs> and had a bit of a shopping trip. So I'm just going to say thank you, everyone, um, for your time, and thanks for listening. Good luck on your adventures. Sure, I've never killed a player. You're not trying hard enough. I was about to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> there's still time. There's still time. There's still time. <laughs>